Have you ever wondered why two-factor authentication or 2FA is so important? Why is it recommended for even the most basic accounts? Well, today we're going to explore this very topic. Two-factor authentication is a security measure that adds an extra layer of protection to your accounts. It's like having a second lock on your front door. You need two keys instead of one to get in. This added layer of security is achieved by combining something you know with something you have. For instance, the something you know could be your password, while the something you have could be your mobile device or a hardware token. So, you've entered your password, but before you can access your account, you'll need to provide a second piece of evidence. A unique code, fingerprint, or even a facial scan. This second step makes it far more difficult for unauthorized users to gain access to your information, even if they've somehow managed to steal or guess your password. But here's the catch. Even with two-factor authentication enabled, your accounts aren't invincible. Vulnerabilities can still exist, and these can potentially be exploited by those with the know-how and the intent. This becomes particularly crucial when we consider the information some of our accounts may hold, personal details, financial information, confidential data, and more. But don't let this dishearten you. Awareness is the first step towards better security. By understanding where these vulnerabilities lie, we can take measures to strengthen our defenses, making it even harder for these potential exploits to succeed. So are you ready to delve a little deeper into this world of 2FA? It's time to lift the veil and take a closer look at some techniques that can bypass this security measure. But remember, with great knowledge comes great responsibility. Let's use what we learn to make the digital world a safer place for all. Now let's delve into some techniques that can bypass this security measure. The first technique is inconsistent MFA enforcement. This technique involves identifying all authentication functionality in an application and checking if multi-factor authentication or MFA is enforced consistently across all methods. If some methods do not require MFA, these can provide a straightforward way to bypass 2FA. Next, we have the multi-step authentication bypass technique. If the authentication is conducted in multiple steps, it might be possible to bypass it by completing only the first step of the authentication process. Then, you can force browse to the application or make direct API requests without completing the second stage. Moving on, we have OpenID Connect or OIDC Provider Authentication Flows. If an application authenticates with a flow that allows custom authentication flows, like Azure B2C, there might be multiple flows defined, some of which may not require MFA. This could potentially be exploited to bypass 2FA. Now let's talk about intentional MFA bypasses. In some cases, there might be intentional MFA bypasses implemented, such as not requiring MFA from specific IP addresses when a certain HTTP header is set, or for a specific hard-coded account. Let's not forget about local and federated logins. If an application supports both local and federated logins, it might be possible to bypass the MFA if there is no strong separation between these two types of accounts. And then, there's session manipulation. Start the flow using your account and the victim's account. When reaching the 2FA point on both accounts, complete the 2FA with your account, but do not access the next part. Instead, try to access the next step with the victim's account flow. If the backend only sets a Boolean inside your session saying that you have successfully passed the 2FA, you will be able to bypass the 2FA of the victim. Lastly, we have forced browsing. If the application redirects to the slash my account URL upon login while 2FA is disabled, try replacing slash 2FA slash verify with a slash my account while 2FA is enabled to bypass verification. That's quite a lot to digest, isn't it? But we're not done yet. Let's move on to more techniques. Let's continue with intentional MFA bypasses. Sometimes organizations may intentionally implement multi-factor authentication, MFA, bypasses for specific situations. For instance, MFA might not be required when accessing from certain IP addresses or when a specific HTTP header is set. In other cases, MFA might be bypassed for a specific hard-coded account. These intentional bypasses, while convenient, can create vulnerabilities if discovered and exploited. Now let's talk about applications that support both local and federated logins. A local login is when you sign in directly to the application, 
while a federated login is when you sign in through a third-party identity provider, like Google or Facebook. If there isn't a strong separation between these two types of accounts, it might be possible to bypass MFA altogether. So, it's crucial for developers to enforce MFA across all login methods and account types. Next, we have session manipulation. This technique involves using the same session to start the authentication flow for your account and the victim's account. When you reach the 2FA point on both accounts, complete the 2FA with your account, but don't move on to the next part. Instead, try to access the next step with the victim's account flow. If the backend only sets a Boolean inside your session saying that you have successfully passed the 2FA, you might end up bypassing the 2FA of the victim's account. Lastly, let's discuss force browsing. Sometimes an application redirects to a certain URL upon login when 2FA is disabled. If you replace this URL with another while 2FA is enabled, you might bypass the verification process. These are just a few examples of how 2FA can be bypassed. It's important to remember that these techniques should only be used ethically and responsibly to help identify and fix security vulnerabilities. Now let's wrap things up. Remember, these techniques are meant to be used responsibly and only with proper authorization. In the world of cybersecurity, knowledge is power, but it's crucial to wield that power ethically and lawfully. These strategies for bypassing two-factor authentication aren't just tricks of the trade for ethical hackers. They're also invaluable insights for businesses and individuals alike, helping to reveal potential vulnerabilities and reinforce security measures. You see, every bypass technique we've discussed today is a reminder of the relentless, evolving nature of cybersecurity threats. But it's also a call to action. It's an invitation for all of us to stay vigilant, to keep learning, and to collaborate in our shared mission of making the digital landscape safer for everyone. So let's keep up the good work and remember to always respect the rules of the game. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more ethical hacking content. Keep exploring and stay safe online.